25 years of collaboration is not a simple thing. Marvelous achievement. My happy felicitations for all those who are responsible for the successful collaborations. <laughs> this is doubly significant because of the fact Deakin University collaboration is primarily in the area of diabetes research, which is very much needed for our country. As it has been already highlighted by Dr. Mohan, we are trying to catch up China in disease burden related to diabetes. So that, means that, that is the need for our own country to really strengthen diabetes research in which Dr. Mohan has made phenomenal contribution for this country and his group has made a lot of contributions. As a researcher myself, I always feel that Indian research should make a breakthrough to be quoted by international scientists. So if that too is, is to be happened, this is the appropriate time. When already Dr. Mohan's publications are being quoted in so many places, in various aspects of research, maybe epidemiological research or genetic basis research or operational research and so on and so forth, I would also like to see our Indian researchers to look at some original research which can give or alleviate the sufferings of the diabetic people. How can we do that? I thought I'd just say one instance, just only about a week ago I read one article in the journal Cell Metabolism. This article is titled as Preserving Insulin Secretion in Diabetes by Inhibiting VDAC1 Overexpression and surface translocation in beta cells. I am not going into the details except to tell you that these researchers have demonstrated that these VDAC1 antibodies, VDAC is nothing but the voltage dependent anion channel 1 protein present on the mitochondrial outer cell membrane of the beta cells. So these cells, if they are made by some way of hyperglycemia, they overexpress and they damage the cells by way of its degree of diabetes may increase. But if you can have some antibodies to be that one or inhibitors to be developed, then that may alleviate the suffering and it may try to help uh, in preventing the progress of the disease per se, including the complications. So these researchers have shown metformin is working like that in addition to its routine modes of activity, one more mode of activity of their activity by inhibiting the retact one protein has been shown. They have also demonstrated using some animal models, TBTD mice models, to show that this kind of inhibition can be made. What I am trying to suggest is we have a lot of wealth of information in not only our modern systems of medicine but also in traditional systems of medicine. A lot of claims are being made but unfortunately they are unsubstantiated. Why don't we develop models besides the disease models, some assay models and then try to demonstrate their real reliability and reproducibility. I think that could be another way of translation of research that we can impart upon. I wish this work of every success. I thank Dr. Morgan for having given me this opportunity. Thank you very much. There are some islands of success and I'd like to share a couple of them with you. But before that, why is diabetes so common in India? This is a question which we are often asked. Is it genes? Is it environment? Is it both? Quick answer, we don't know all the answers, but we do have some solutions. We are finding new answers all the time. But there's something called as the Asian Indian phenotype, which has been described for quite some time now. We call it also the South Asian phenotype, which is also common to Pakistan and Bangladesh uh, and Sri Lanka and so on. And this consists of several factors. Some of them are listed here. The list is not complete. The first thing is, as Anjana just showed, we seem to get the disease at a much younger age. Why is that? We have no idea. Secondly, many years ago when working in the UK, when I did CLAMP studies and looked at insulin levels in the white Caucasian population and compared them with the South Asian population, age match and BMI match, we found that the insulin levels are very high, even among the non-diabetic people. And this seems to burn out their insulin 
fast and therefore we become diabetic. And so the, there's also a lower threshold for BMI. You don't have to be obese to get diabetes in our country. Most people are thin, increase in insulin levels. More recently, we have shown a rapid decline in beta cell function. People take years to develop diabetes, from normal glucose tolerance to pre-diabetes to diabetes, a big journey in the West. Here it's four years, three years. They zoom through the stage of normal glucose tolerance to pre-diabetes to diabetes. Even within our own studies, we have shown the fast conversion. This has been confirmed in the UK as well. We have a characteristic dyslipidemia, low HDL. Practically the whole population sitting here in this room, if I checked your HDL levels, probably very few would have more than 50 milligrams. And if I check the HDL of the Westerners sitting here, the white population sitting here, we'll all have HDLs above 50. Why is that so? We believe there's some genetic influence, but also it could be that. And so on and so forth. We have low muscles, no reason, I mean, probably explains why we win so few Olympic medals. In fact, one of the jokes about the Indians is that the, the, the medal that they actually won was for a sport where you have to stand absolutely still, shooting. <laughs> absolutely still, and then you get a medal. Uh, so, we have a lot of things which are unexplained, I'm not going to belabor this more, uh, but there are simple things as well. If you just look at one item, and that's rice, the amount of carbs that we take in our diet, and I presented this at the ADA, and I think Catherine was there. When, if you just divide Chennai into four quartiles, based on the amount of carbs that you take, the first quartile being about 200 grams, and the fourth quartile being 400 grams, there's a four times increase in prevalence of diabetes, given that this is cross-sectional studies and it could be confounders, but we have adjusted for almost all the confounders we can think of. And now in our incident studies, we are showing the same thing. We have some new data coming out from the PURE study, where again we are confirming the same thing. But you know what? If you look at the Western population and divide them into quartiles, their fourth quartile of consumption of carbs is less than our first quartile. So the starting point itself is so different. So you have to actually look at it in terms of the grams of the rice that you take. But the point is that just eating too much of carbs could explain part of this Asian Indian phenotype. Is it only carbs? What if you look at physical activity? Now if you forget about carbs for a moment and just divide Chennai into those who do some heavy physical activity, you don't find too many of those in Chennai, I can tell you that. And then the moderate physical activity and the light physical activity there's a tripling of the diabetes, and this is independent of, of the rice that you take, okay, after adjusting for the rice. So clearly there are factors coming out, showing that yes, diet could be one, physical activity could be the other. We're going to listen to Dr. Kalpana whether she can come up with new, newer etiological mechanisms, but there are also things like depression and things which I'm not going to. But these are low-hanging fruit. So if you can cut your carbs and increase your exercise, you can actually prevent diabetes and we have some evidence for that, although in this 10 minutes I can't give you all the evidence. And therefore I'm going to give you just two success stories, both of them are community based, okay? And both of them are not randomized clinical trials, the randomized clinical trial which we have published is called DEEPLIP, which was published in Diabetes Care two years ago, you can read that up, in the interest of time I'm not showing you that. But this is something which we can all do in our societies and that's why I'm presenting this to you. We started our epidemiological studies in a very humble way by selecting a slum in Chennai, which is a low income group, and a, the typical flats where the middle income group in Chennai lived. This is in the late 1990s, 1998 or so, when we started what's called as the CUP study. There's a very simple hypothesis here. Who do you think will have more diabetes, here or there? And then I already gave you the answer that today it's different. The lower income group is getting there. But our hypothesis then was that these guys would have more diabetes because they're using cars, they're better off, their body mass index is higher, and so on. And therefore, no surprise, although it was published in a good journal because there's no data on intra-urban prevalence of diabetes. And we showed 12% in the middle income group and 6% in the low income group. This is a surprise. We didn't expect 6% in the poorest of the poor in Chennai at that time. This was around 2000 when we published this. We then did a very simple experiment. We said, what if we went back to this group and then told them, look, your diabetes is going to go up much more. So can we do something about it? Can we slow it down? So they said, what should we do? They said, the simplest thing to do is to increase your exercise. And they said, no, in Chennai you can't do that. So you start exercising, you start walking in Chennai, you will die of many reasons. Number one, a dog may bite you and you may get rabies. 
Second, a truck may hit you because there's no traffic rules followed at all. The third, the smoke from the truck may hit you, which is what probably Kalpana is going to talk about. So, so they said, no, we can't do that. So we said, you have to find safe places to walk. That's simple. They said, where do you find safe places to walk? So as we're talking, we found that this is a colony, an enclosed gated community, and just next door to that was a large vacant space. So we said, what is this for? They said, well, we're going to build another colony there, another residential colony, the Asia colony too. So we said, why don't you change your plans and build a park instead? So they went to the government, the government said, oh, we have no money, we have run out of money, you know, we don't have. So then, the, the residents themselves, they raised money and built a beautiful park, which became a huge WHO success story. And this is the video, which is not working. It's working, okay. So that's the colony, and just next to that is this beautiful park for the first time in India, built by the residents themselves, getting, using their own money. This is the turning point, and the second park and the third park was built by different residents of Chennai. And then the government took over, and they realized, oh my gosh, now these guys are doing it. So they built 100 parts, and they renovated 100 parts. So we got 200 parts in Chennai as a result of this. Now you can see, people have started walking. So they have a safe place. So we said, let's extend this experiment. It's not a randomized clinical trial, but still it's a community empowerment. Let's see what happens to the exercise. So there are skeptics who said that they will not increase their exercise. But they were wrong because from 13% of people who exercise, it went up to 52% of the colony exercising. You may say, why didn't the other 40% do it? Well, many of them are old, some of them just can't walk, but this is good enough. There's 277% increase in exercises within a colony by the park that they built. Incidentally, the park is still active, 10, 15 years have passed, and it's maintained very well. Then we said, okay, now what happens to diabetes now? By that time, diabetes is increasing in Chennai. Most of these are Chennai-based studies, and you can see from 2%, it's now over 24% of people about 20 years of age having diabetes in Chennai. If you take age 55 and above, 40% have diabetes, and 35% have pre-diabetes. So 75% of Chennai's population at age 55 has either diabetes or pre-diabetes. So we went back to this colony somewhere around this time, and the prevalence has already increased to 18% in Chennai, and in some of those middle-income groups adjacent to this colony, it was already in the range of 20-22%. So we said, okay, if there is a lower prevalence of diabetes in this colony, it must be because they are exercising. So we went back, remember the original figure was 12%, we are very happy that the prevalence in this colony was only 15%, we had a tough time getting this published because this wasn't a randomized clinical uh, trial, but we have other evidences that exercise was more, the waist circumference was less and so on. But a slight increase in the diabetes. Now comes the bad news. The bad news is, you know the other colony, we completely forgot about them. Because they had other problems, they had tuberculosis, they had malaria, they had all kinds of other infectious diseases, they had alcoholism, they had all kinds of problems. They're not ready for diabetes prevention. So we left them alone. Ten years later we went back and said, let's just test them and see what happened. Then we got the shock of our life because from 6% it increased to 15%. And as Anjana just showed you, now it's actually higher in the lower income group. It will be totally unethical to leave them out now, but we had no data at that time. So the bad news is that it's increasing in the poor people. But this is an example of prevention of diabetes through community empowerment. We didn't do anything else. We didn't give them drugs. We didn't give them anything. They built the park and they prevented diabetes. Now this can be scaled up in every city we can prevent diabetes, even without the government, without anybody, just by people themselves being aware of it. The second and the last story I want to share with you is a rural story. Now, 72% of our population lives in its villages. And therefore, and then 75% of our doctors practice in urban areas. So it's a complete mismatch. No government from the British days onwards till today has been able to persuade our doctors to en masse move into rural areas and practice there. It's a tough call. There are a lot of challenges in rural areas. There's poverty, lack of awareness, lack of access, and lots of other problems. So we said we must crack this problem. That we didn't find any such solution anywhere in the world. So we said we have to evolve one. And since doctors can't go, we have to use technology. 
And the first principle that we said was, we'll make the 6A test, which we'll implement. implement. That's we'll make diabetes care available, accessible, affordable, appropriate, acceptable, and accountable in rural India through a project which we took up in Chunampet. Chunampet is in Kanchipuram district. For those who don't know where that is, that's Chennai, and that's the next district called Kanchipuram district. At the southern tip of Kanchipuram district is this little village called Chunampet. There's another adjoining one called Ilidu, and we work in both these places. Why did we go there? Because it's Zaminda, the owner of the village, he was a bachelor, he owned the whole village. And so he was giving away land. He gave away land to the government, to the schools, to electricity board, uh, to the National Agro Foundation. And one day he called me and he said, I'm going to give you 10 acres of land. And you tell me what you're going to do with it. So I said, okay, we are also interested in a rural model. You are giving this free of cost. We will do everything free of cost there. We will build a rural center there. And then using telemedicine, we'll go around the villages, spreading diabetes awareness and also check up for diabetes and diabetes treatment. So this is the van that we built. We had to build it from scratch. And inside is verily a mobile diabetes hospital. So it has uh, ultrasound in it, it has echo, it has uh, ECG in it, Dopplers, it has retinal photography, it has blood testing units and everything inside, air condition. It also has a satellite, which was donated by Indian Space Research Organization. So based on this, we started going to villages and meeting people such as this, where we go to the huts, we employ young men and women of those villages, train them to do whatever a doctor would normally do, heights, weights, blood pressures, blood sugars, and so on. They do really well, because for them it's a big opportunity in life to serve their own community. If somebody turns out there, so we screen the whole population, and if somebody has diabetes, the van is just parked outside the door. They can go inside there and have a complete checkup for diabetes as they would do in Australia or in India, including eye exams, checkups for cataract, fundus examination, retinal pictures being taken, being flashed back to our main center in Gopalapuram, where Dr. Pratipa, the ophthalmologist, is talking to the lady sitting inside the van 150 kilometers away, telling her that that's the lens and that's cataract, that's diabetic retinopathy, that's what we've looked at, your eyes are normal, come back after here. We built the Sai Rural Center in the land given by uh, this uh, Raminda, and that's Dr. Uh, Rakesh, who is a local boy. We took him, the doctor trained him, and put him back in his own village, so he's able to serve his people. The results were amazing, and within a very short period of time, we were able to take diabetes awareness to over 200,000 people uh, in 42 villages in and around Chunampet, screened the entire diabetic population, about 50,000 people, and we picked up everyone with diabetes there and screened everyone for diabetic complications. This would have been unheard of in a village to look at your eyes and your teeth and the kidney and, and everything. Most importantly, using the lowest cost generic drugs that we could get, just a few paise uh, a day, we were able to bring the HPA and the entire population down from 9.3 to 8.5 in the first year, and we got better by the second year. This was written about in the Lancet, as uh, the Lancet covered uh, chronic disease in India and had a whole article on that, and the Lancet article mentioned that the Chunampet Rural Diabetes Project is a good model for delivering preventive and therapeutic diabetes healthcare to rural areas. So, ladies and gentlemen, I conclude by saying yes, we do have a huge problem of diabetes in India, but that's why I said that we can learn from technology, which is probably there in Deakin and other people with whom we work with, but then we have to apply it locally, make it relevant. Uh, the Asian Indian phenotype is not something we can change, but if it is related to diet or other factors, we can probably change that too. But the good news is that prevention of diabetes is possible. I didn't show you the RCT which we did, but proper RCT showing that diabetes can be prevented in people with prediabetes. And the Asia Colony success story shows us that all you need is to inspire the community. And they will take the ownership and they will do it themselves. And finally, even in rural India, the Chunampet Rural Diabetes Project has been a fairly large project which, if duplicated, can help to improve
the health of rural people in India. And mentoring hundreds of staff and students. As an educator, he has been responsible for the dissemination of knowledge on diabetes internationally over several decades. And Deakin University is proud to have developed jointly with Dr. Mohan a diabetes educator course that is being delivered by the MDRF to community nurses at very low cost. In 2018, Dr. Mohan was awarded the Harold Ripken Distinguished International Service in the Course of Diabetes Award by the American Diabetes Association, making him the first doctor from India to receive this award. We at Deakin now honour Dr. Mohan and our, and our long and proud association with him, and so it is our great pleasure to announce the appointment of Dr. Mohan as an honorary professor of Deakin University. Welcome and congratulations, Professor Mohan. We are delighted that you have accepted this position and we look forward to the wonderful leadership and mentorship that you will give to the next generation in how to lead a good, how to lead a good life, how to be an excellent researcher and how to be a thoroughly splendid partner and friend. And I have a small gift to mark the moment. Deakin University, Melbourne, Australia, அவங்க வந்து ஆஸ்திரேலியாவுடைய ஒரு டாப் யூனிவர்சிட்டின்னு சொல்லலாம் உலக அளவிலேயே இப்போ ரொம்ப டாப்பில் இருக்காங்க இந்தியா கூட அவங்க இருபத்தைந்து ஆண்டுகளாக கொலாபரேட் பண்ணிகிட்ருக்காங்க பல பல ரிசர்ச் ப்ராஜெக்ட்ஸ் பல பல யூனிவர்சிட்டிஸ் கூட கொலாபரேட் பண்ணிகிட்ருக்காங்க ஸோ இந்த வருஷம் அவங்களுடைய சில்வர் ஜூப்ளி கொண்டாடுறதுக்காக டெல்லியிலையும் சென்னையிலையும் சில ப்ரோக்ராம்ஸ் ஆர்கனைஸ் பண்ணியிருக்காங்க சென்னையில் வந்து ரெண்டு இடத்துல ஒன்று வந்து ஐஐடி மெட்ராஸில் இன்றைக்கி ஒரு செமினார் வச்சுருக்காங்க நாங்கள் வந்து டாக்டர் மோகன்ஸ் டயபிட்டிஸ் ஸ்பெஷாலிட்டி சென்டரில் இருந்தோம் மெட்ராஸ் டயபிட்டிஸ் ரிசர்ச் ஃபவுண்டேஷனில் இருந்தோம் டிகேன் யூனிவர்சிட்டி கூட அஞ்சு வருஷமாக கொலாபரேட் பண்ணிகிட்ருக்கோம் என்ன பண்ணிகிட்ருக்கோன்னு கேட்டிங்கன்னா முதல் முறையாக டிகேன் யூனிவர்சிட்டி எங்கள் பிஹெச்டி ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸுக்கு ஒரு ஆப்பர்ச்சுனிட்டி கொடுத்துருக்காங்க இங்கே சென்னையில் எங்கள் சென்ட்ரலில் ஒர்க் பண்ணிவிட்டு பிஹெச்டி டிகிரி பட்டம் வந்து டிகன் யூனிவர்சிட்டிலேருந்து மெல்பர்ன் ஆஸ்திரேலியாவிலேருந்து வாங்கலாம் அது மாத்திரம் இல்லை அவங்க வந்து ரொம்ப கைண்டாக வந்து ஃபீஸை வந்து கம்ப்ளீட்டாக ஒதுக்கிட்டு ஃபீஸ் பே பண்ண வேண்டியதே இல்லை ஒரு ஸ்டூடெண்ட்டுக்கு அங்கே போய் மூணு மாதம் ஆறு மாதம் வரலும் ஸ்பெண்ட் பண்ணுறதுக்கு கற்றுக்கிறதுக்காக அதுக்கு அவங்க பே பண்ணிவிட்டு இது மாதிரி ரொம்ப அட்வான்டேஜஸாக இருக்குது வேறு ஒரு ஃபாரின் யூனிவர்சிட்டி இது மாதிரி பண்ணதில்லை ஸோ கிட்டத்தட்ட மூணு பிஹெச்டி ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸ் வந்து கம்ப்ளீட் பண்ணிட்டாங்க பிஹெச்டி ஸ்டடீஸுக்கு முன்னே பட்டம் வாங்குற ஸ்டேஜில் இருக்காங்க இன்னொரு மூணு நாலு ஸ்டூடெண்ட்ஸ் வந்து இப்போது இது பிஹெச்டி பண்ணிகிட்ருக்காங்க அது தவிர ரெண்டு வருஷம் முன்னாடி ஒரு புது கோர்ஸ் ஒரு டயபிட்டீஸ் நர்ஸ் எஜுகேட்டர்ஸ் கோர்ஸ் என்று சொல்லி ஒரு கோர்ஸ் வந்து முதல் இந்த மாதிரி ஒரு கோர்ஸ் இந்தியாவில் கிடையாது முதன் முறையாக டிகன் யூனிவர்சிட்டி வந்து எங்கள் கூட சேர்ந்து இந்த கோர்ஸை வந்து கண்டக்ட் பண்ணியிருக்காங்க முப்பது நர்ஸஸ் வந்து இந்த டிப்ளமா வந்து கம்ப்ளீட் பண்ணியிருக்காங்க இன்னொரு பதினஞ்சு பேர் இப்போ ஜாயின் பண்ணியிருக்காங்க ஸோ இந்த மாதிரி வந்து பிஹெச்டி மாத்திரம் இல்லை இந்த மாதிரி டிப்ளமா கோர்ஸஸ் மாத்திரம் இல்லை இன்னும் மேலும் பல புது கோர்ஸஸ் வந்து டிகேன் யூனிவர்சிட்டி கூட நாங்கள் பண்ணுறதுக்காக இருக்கோம் ஸோ இந்த ட்வெண்ட்டி ஃபிஃப்த் இயர் ஆனிவர்சரி டைமில் எங்களை செலக்ட் பண்ணிவிட்டு ஒரு நீரிழிவு நோய் டயபிட்டிஸை பற்றி ஒரு செமினார் கண்டக்ட் பண்ணுங்கன்னு சொல்லிட்டு அவங்க யூனிவர்சிட்டியிலேருந்து ஒரு நாலஞ்சு ப்ரொஃபஸர்ஸ் வந்திருக்காங்க அவங்களுடைய வைஸ் சான்சலரும் பிரசிடெண்டும் வந்திருந்தாங்க டெப்யூட்டி சான்சலரும் வந்திருக்காங்க சென்னையிலேருந்து இப்போ எங்கள் சென்ட்ரலில் மாத்திரம் இல்லை மற்ற யூனிவர்சிட்டிஸ்லேருந்து ராமச்சந்திரா மெடிக்கல் காலேஜ் எஸ்ஆர்எம் மற்ற காலேஜஸில் இருந்து கூட நிறைய பேர் வந்து இந்த செமினாரில் பார்ட்டிசிபேட் பண்ணி நீரிழிவுனோ எதனால் இந்தியாவில் வருது அது எப்படி தடுக்கிறது எப்படி கட்டுப்பாடில் வைக்கிறது எப்படி நீண்ட நாள் ஆரோக்கியத்தினுடைய காம்ப்ளிகேஷன்ஸ் இல்லாமல் சிக்கல்கள் இல்லாமல் வாழ வேண்டும் இதெல்லாம் வந்து இந்த செமினாரில் இன்றைக்கி டிஸ்கஸ